In the workshop, a Marquis Traction Engine. This is part four, making the gas burner mounting and the gas tank support. I silver soldered the brass mounting bracket together for the burner, and in this clip you can see how it's going to fit. Now it's time to make a mounting to hold the gas tank in the correct position in the bunker. And here I'm measuring the distance between the frames where I'm going to fit the mounting plate. So I marked it out, cut it on the bandsaw, and all I need to do now is cut it to the correct length. And once I cut the brass plate to length, I held it in position over the two holes in the foot plate. And here I'm checking that the two markings are in line. And after I drilled the two holes in the brass plate, the brass plate is in line with the holes in the foot plate. The next part of the job isn't very technical. I just sit the gas tank on the brass plate and draw around it with a felt tip pen. This will show the position where it's going to be. I'm going to make a fitting that I will silver solder to this plate, which will hold the tank in place. And I need it to be just over two inches. I don't want it to be a tight fit. So now with a piece of brass fitted in the four jaw self-centering chuck in my smart and brown lathe, I'm facing off the front edge of this to make it square. This brass is a piece of tube, so it will save time when I start to bore it like this. The calipers are set to just the right size, which is slightly above two inches. And because this is a big piece of tube to start with, it didn't take long at all. Looking at the colour of this, I think it's probably phosphor bronze. And in this clip, I'm using a parting tool to turn the outside diameter. I took all of the rough cuts using a knife tool, like I normally would. But just for the final cut, I used a parting tool. And you can do this, it gets a very good finish on the work. But using parting tools to turn outside diameters is not recommended. And don't try it with carbide tip parting tools. With the component parted off, you can now clearly see the arrangement for the gas tank mounting. All I need to do now is silver solder the ring to the brass plate. But first of all, I need to remove the felt tip pen line that I only put on there for the purposes of the video. And after the parts are silver soldered together, they look like this. Here's the arrangement. The brass plate, complete with the fitting, sits on the foot plate and that locates the gas tank. It's not a tight fit, I didn't want it to be, because if it was a tight fit, it would just remove the paint from the gas tank. I put the silver soldered brass parts into the acid bath, and I thought it would be a good idea at this time to repaint the cover that goes over the gears. The next morning, when I removed the brass parts from the acid bath, they looked a whole lot better. They just needed a little bit more cleaning up with Scotch-Brite, which also serves to score the surface, and then more painting. This is etch primer. My advice when using etch primer is do not spray it on too thick. You need to see the metal through the etch primer. Not only is that my advice, that's what it says in the instructions. And another 24 hours later, I spray on the top coat. This is HMG Satin Black. I left the paint to dry and bent the pipe to fit the burner. This pipe is a commercial item and it has a special fitting with an O-ring at the gas tank end. Time to test it. I have some gas in the tank, so I used that rather than filling the smaller one. With these Bix burners, it's really important to read the instructions. The gas jet, and in this case it's a number 8 gas jet, needs to be in exactly the right position in the Venturi pipe. Too far forward, you get a very yellow sooty flame. Too far back, the burner's likely to overheat. It's very important when using these Bix burners to thoroughly read the instructions and understand how you set them up. In this clip, once the gas jet was in the optimum position and everything looked good and felt good and sounded good, then it was time to just mark it with a felt tip pen so that when I fit the entire assembly to the traction engine, it will be in the same place. And with these Bix burners, if ever you hear a roaring sound, turn the gas off immediately because that means that the flame is burning down inside the burner instead of on top of it. It's time now to fit the entire assembly to the traction engine, and for this I'm using a pair of 2BA bolts with washers and nuts. And when I fit the gas jet assembly, it looks like this. Just in case you're wondering why there is a coil in the gas jet pipe, I'd love to say something technical about strain relief, etc., but really it was because this commercial item, the gas pipe and the fittings, was too long. So there you have it, the Marquis Traction Engine now is a gas-fired Marquis Traction Engine, and I'll be giving it a steam test in the next episode. But for now, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.